Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Fight Week EFC 80s on the way. Myself and Warren King, and we've got the mighty Gareth McLennan on the phone. Welcome to the show, man. How's it, bud? Thanks for having me. Fantastic. How's things going, Gareth? Yeah, going well, huh? Um, lost a lot of preparation now, but I'm busy concentrating on the, the weight cut, which seems to be going quite well, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, otherwise, uh, a few sessions uh, during during the course of the week, just to keep myself sharp and uh, make sure the blades are 100% uh, ready to strike. And uh, yeah, that's Saturday night we've got. Fantastic, man. Um, yeah, j- just to, to go, obviously, where, where this bout started with uh, being a coach on the fighter, it's, it's obviously a, a long-winded build-up. Do you feel like any sort of exhaustion in the, you know, being a coach, going through the whole show, then having to watch the show, relive everything, and then now get ready for the fight? Yeah, look, I mean, we've really had to be smart um, and uh, really, need to, really needed to manage myself through, through this course. I mean, we'd already started training last year already. Fight was meant to be in March, but moved out to now until to the end of this, this month. So, you know, um, what we'd originally set up to do, we had to slow down, change direction a little bit. But I, I had a good team around me. You know, I brought on a high-performance coach uh, in Wayne Taylor, and uh, he's, he's a big name in the rugby, rugby circles, and he's managed that whole process. He's been really good at making sure that... Um, I don't go out too fast and, you know, I stay within my lane and, you know, he's really made sure that uh, I peak at the right time. So uh, I'm really happy with the job that he's done. Um, it could have it could have gone either way. I think the old me would have been 100 miles an hour and, and would have broken at some stage um, and then had to rebuild. But, you know, we've kept our, our pedal at, uh, at 60 to 70% most of the way and just ramped it up closer to the fight. And now I feel like I'm actually to you. Fantastic, man. Uh, Gareth, it's Warren here. How are you? All right, and you, bud. Good, good. So, um, your your last fight camp uh, for your last fights in the UFC, you were out in New Zealand, and then obviously this fight camp, you here in South Africa, but your first fight camp locally outside of the FFM realm. Um, what, what camp have you put together around you, barring obviously... Uh, the strength and conditioning, which you've just uh, spoken about now. Um, we see you've been training a lot of the PR. Have you recruited Neil back on the team, kind of with your preparation and that? So, you know, Neil's always been around. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's been a good just coach to me. You know, he brought me into that, uh, into that realm, and he was really solid in terms of my growth. Um, obviously, you know, once I, I left the FFM group, you know, I needed to make sure that that was uh, kept... Um, Kept, or I had a watchful eye over it, and uh, you know, with the fact that I started with him, I'd always got good gains out of him. Um, and uh, as a coach, he'd always been solid and, and a good cornerman. Um, so I brought him on to to run as to be the head coach for for this this camp. Um, he, he was just really good with my mindset round round certain fights that uh, when I needed him, and uh, I saw that as a big asset going forward. I pulled on a lot a lot of different other coaches as well. Um, which have picked up uh, various roles in certain areas. And uh, it was a good combination. I needed to find guys, because they had not worked with each other before, were able to easily gel with each other and uh, that we could get the product that we needed at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think coaches are, are, are a massive um, massive part of what we need to do as, as fighters. Um, you know, unfortunately, we do lack... Um, high-level coaches in, in South Africa. You know, there's only a few guys. So I just needed to put together a really smart group. I just got guys who had been in their industries for a very long time and, uh, you know, had, had good names and um, also understood the MMA world. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a good package. You know, I used my experience as well from, from traveling and, and what I'd learned to, to put into that as well. And, yeah, look, I think we're all extremely happy with what we've come out with. Brilliant, brilliant. And... Um Obviously, it's been uh, it's been quite a while since you've been in the in the octagon or the hexagon, and um, I think you're, you're just over two years now. Um, I know Dominic Cruz says ring rust doesn't exist. Uh, do you feel that this time away has given you what you needed to perform at a high level? I mean, you know, some guys get fatigued at this continuous three fights a year type of pace. Do you feel like this two years out has been really powerful for you, or would you have liked to have gotten there earlier? No, look, I mean, when I left, um, I was saying in an interview earlier on, 
that when I left, um, you know, I was really leaving. I, I, at the end of that, the UFC was kind of me saying, okay, I'm done now, you know. Yeah. I pushed so hard and I'd literally broken myself uh, to the point where I didn't enjoy the space anymore. I didn't want to be there. Um, I didn't really have any desire to want to compete anymore. Um, and I thought it was a good time to really, um, you know, step away and uh, start looking at other opportunities. I had moved on quite a little bit. I mean, I was 35 at that stage as well. So, you know, I was also thinking to myself, you know, I'd, a good, I'd had a good career and it was maybe time to look at uh, hanging up the gloves. But still there was certain doubts and questions I needed to ask. So it wasn't 100% of a decision. The time away for me has been the best thing that I could ever have done for myself. It's really allowed my body time to heal, my mind time to refresh itself. And then I also just got an opportunity to do MMA as a as a as a as a normal person and not as a fighter. Yeah. And I really found this incredible passion for for uh, MMA like I had had in the beginning and and taking me on this martial arts journey. And uh, and of course, you know that fire inside of me, that competitive fire, just kept on building and building and building and building. And you know, once I realised that I didn't lose much, in fact, that I didn't lose anything, I had progressed in my in my abilities. You know, I really felt like it was time to go back and, and see see where I was and, and what I was capable of and was I capable of uh, having a good crack at it. Um, you know, the, the opportunity came along with UFC and I, and I jumped at it because I thought it was a good space. And, you know, being at home and not having to travel and not having to go and do camps overseas, I could be in my own environment and be comfortable, um, was, was, was an amazing opportunity. Um, and I'm super excited, you know. Uh, I'm really excited to be fighting in front of the South African fans again. It's just a, it's a, it's a blessing uh, for me that I get the opportunity to do something that I love so much, and uh, I get to do it one more time. You know, really? so, not a lot of people can can say that. You know, that not a lot of opportunity to leave and then get a good opportunity to come back. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm not getting the vibe yet that it's just one more fight. Uh, you, you're back for for a couple of fights. <laughs> Look, no pressure. I haven't put any pressure on myself. I haven't said that I I need to fight a certain amount of times. I um, I never felt like I needed to be in a certain direction. There's no, there was no drive to say, oh, I needed to be champion again, or I needed to make it back to the UFC, or I needed to do this or that. I just said I wanted to fight. I wanted to enjoy that moment and enjoy that space. Um, and where it goes, I don't know. I had a long chat with my pastor about it and saying, you know, how, how do I know when it's time? How do I know when it's time to really give up? Or when how do I know when it's time to say goodbye? And he just said to me, you'll know. You know, when you're in there, in that moment, you'll know that it's that it, that it's done or, or what's not. So for me, it's an open book right now. Uh, I'm excited about what's in front of me. I'm excited about this opportunity with, uh, with EFC. I think that Brennan Azar is an incredible opponent that a lot of people don't give a lot of credit to. And uh, I think he's being so successful because people have overlooked him every time. He likes that underdog status. He likes to fight. Um, I think if we have a look at this, the situation that he that we're in, he's probably the guy that uh, is is, is front runner. He's the guy that's been fighting. He's the guy that fought for his opportunity for the title. He's the rightfully number one contender in in the, in the EFC. Um, he earned that right. I, I'm just somebody who's coming back. He's been given an opportunity for the things that I did before. And, uh, you know, I have to grab it with both hands. I feel like I've, I've worked the best that I've ever done a, as a fighter. I've been smarter and more intelligent um, in, in the way that I prepared myself. And I feel like my mind just meets my body at the moment and and, uh, and my emotions. And I, I'm really excited to see what I'm capable I, I really, I really feel I'm free just to do what I want to do. I don't. Yeah, as soon as I put an expectation on it and I, I really put a stamp next to it and said, I have to do this, I think that's where the pressure comes. Yeah. I'm under no pressure. I, I'm excited. I'm a fighter at heart, you know what I mean? That's that's why I got into the sport, uh, uh, because that's just a natural thing that runs through my veins. And I get to do that yeah. um, I, and have fun and doing it at the same time. Brilliant, Fantastic. <clears throat> Sorry, Gareth. Just you, you alluded to the fact that it's been quite a quite a long narrative in, in, in this fight with yourself and Brendan Lazar. Um, a lot of people are kind of counting him out on paper, saying you know like he's only two and zero in the EFC. 
Uh, he went through the fighter. Um, you know, a guy like yourself who's been around since since forever, basically gone to the UFC and stuff. How, how, do you how do you prepare for that mentally? Obviously, keep having people throw that narrative down your throat to kind of say it's going to be a walkover for you. I mean, you've obviously um, accepted the fact that it's going to be a hard fight, and he's unorthodox, and being overlooked is actually one of his strengths. So, so how do you prepare for that mentally when everyone keeps throwing that narrative at you? Well, the thing is, if I allow people to talk into my mind and into my space, then you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna allow that to manifest, and it's gonna become it's gonna become a factor. You know, I I've, I put boundaries into what people can say uh, and what people can tell me. I know what's in front of me, um, and I've been doing this a very, very long time. I've seen the best fighters in the world lose against nobodies. I've seen um, the best and the best rise to the top and fall very hard. Uh, the sport is not a, a sport of, uh, of people who stay there on top for too long. There's very few people in the world that can, can hold that high standard. Um, in MMA, there's one thing in MMA you are going to lose at some stage, and uh, it, it can happen at it. Um, I really just looked at this fight and I said, How do I want to prepare? I prepared as if I was fighting the best fighter in the UFC. I, I was preparing like I would always prepare with the same mindset and the same work ethic that I was fighting in a UFC fight. So I, I, I've, I've put Brendan on this pedestal as he's one of the best fighters in the world, and I need to go out and beat him. And, for, for, for me to beat him on the night, I need to be the best soldier player that could be. And that means mentally, physically, and emotionally, and spiritually, I just need to be in the right space. And that's what I work towards. And uh, when that clicks together on the night, I know what I'm capable of. I've done it many times before. Um, I just need to make sure that it all aligns on, on Saturday. Perfect, man. Um, obviously, Gareth, it's, it's been a long time since South African fans have seen you in there. Um, so just an opportunity for one last message for those people that are going to be watching you fight come Saturday night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to, to everybody that's been involved in, in, in MMA and uh, in my journey. You know, it's been a long journey. Um, I've had the most incredible experiences in the sport. I've had this most, the most incredible experiences I've had in the sport. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to, to really do things I would never have expected um, in a lifetime. Um, if you'd asked me 15 years ago, this is where you're going to be. I would have told you you've been crazy. Um, I thank every single person that has stood by me, that has supported me uh, through my journey, through the hard times uh, and the good times. You know, it hasn't always been it hasn't always been rock starish for for Soldier Boy. He's he's had moments in in his career where it hasn't been. And uh, you know, a lot of people have always given me confidence, always told me um, how much I've done and how many, how much I've inspired. And those are, those have been very important to me over the last two years. And, keeping myself focused and, and pulling myself back to the stage. Um, you know, I've had to go through a lot to get back to the space where I was willing to climb back in there again. You know, I, like I said before, I was I was done and I was and I was walking away. And uh, uh, those people that have constantly, you know, just the, the, the stops in the street to say, you know what, thank you, or well done, or you're amazing. Those things inspired me. They inspired me to want to be in there again. They inspired me to want to show people what Soldier Boy was capable of. They've inspired me to inspire people again. Um, you know, I, I really feel that South African MMA is just at this point that it really uh, it needs it needs to have um, an, some more great moments for it to continue to rise and to grow so that the youngsters coming through can uh, can go on and, and bring us world titles. Um, you know, I get my opportunity to, to put myself once again in, in, in the history books and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to leave my legacy and my stamp on South African MMA. And when I when I say goodbye, you know, I want people to be proud of the things that I've done. Awesome, man. I think that anything else, Warren? No. Cool. Fantastic, Gareth. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we just want to wish you the best of luck with the weight cut and the rest of the bit that's left until Saturday night. And thanks again, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. And thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, man. Cheers, Gareth. Ciao, man. Cheers. Bye.